Hello everybody and welcome to a second tutorial on uh, binary file handling in Java. So in this tutorial we'll be exploring how we can access the data in a binary file that was created earlier and uh, display some content from that particular file. So as you might recall in the first video that is the one that dealt with this first program we had created a file called result.dat and we had stored the names and registration numbers of four students in that file. So the names of the students were A, B, C, D, E, F and G, H and the registration numbers were 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 and 0, 4 and the names were stored in lowercase if I remember correctly. So in this program we'll be reading data from that file and we'll accept a name of the student from the user and we'll search through the contents of that file and check whether the name that was entered by the user exists in that file or not. And if it does exist, what we'll do is we will uh, find the corresponding registration number for that student and we'll be outputting the name of the student as well as the registration number. So as you might recall that uh, text files are character based files and binary files are uh, byte oriented files. So the methods for reading and writing data to those files are different. So I had covered in my previous tutorial on uh, text file handling that uh, in order to read data from a text based file that is a character based file we had to use something called file reader so uh, in the file reader we passed the path of the file that particular file and in the next step we use we had to pass the object of file reader through something called buffered reader so uh, there is some similarity some degree of similarity between um, handling text file and binary file but in rather than file reader or writer we'll be using something called file input stream and file output stream so file output stream was used in the first program while trying to create that re result of that file and now it comes to reading the data from that file so obviously you can guess that instead of file output stream we'll be using something called file input stream all right in order to in the first step the uh, file was created in write mode that is uh, it was ready to accept data and in this step the file has already been created it already exists so what we need to do is we need to uh, open the file in read mode and we need to access the data from that file and for that particular reason we'll be opening in it using file input stream so let me uh, take a look at the code for this file and uh, for this program that is the second program and I'll explain things as I go along as I go through the program and uh, I'll explain all the steps that we that we need to uh, implement while trying to read data from a binary file so here you can see this is the program for uh, this second problem and uh, let me just read the question once write a method to accept the name of a student and display his registration number along with the student's name from the file that was created in step one so this is the task that we have been given in the second program we'll have to read read through that uh, file and then accept the name of the of, of any student from the user and then go through that file and check whether that name does exist or not and if it does exist we'll print his registration number along with his name so these are the packages uh, these are the classes that we require need to import at the beginning of the program in the previous program we had to import the buffered reader data output stream for uh, opening the file in write mode and then the file output stream and uh, file output stream and as well as input stream reader for uh, accepting data from the user so in this program instead of uh, file output stream we'll be using file input stream and uh, some other classes that we are also importing are data out input stream uf exception io exception and input stream reader so let me take a look at the code of this program first of all we'll be passing the fully qualified path name as a parameter to the object of file input stream so here the object of file input stream is called file in so input stream deals with file input stream deals with uh, reading data from a file so here the file will assume that result2 dot sorry result dot that already exists and uh, file input stream is only going to work when we are dealing with a file that exists so if we uh, try to pass the name of a file that does not exist we'll get an exception io exception and remember that in these kind of programs there is a possibility that it might show an IO exception so either you must include this uh, block of code in try in a try block or you can 
uh, declare that it throws an IO exception at the beginning of the program. And in the next step, after creating an object of file input stream, we'll be passing this uh, file in object through an object of uh, as a parameter to the object of data input stream. Here, the name of the object of data input stream is in, and we'll be passing this file in as a parameter to data input stream. Okay. And this buffered reader uh, has been used. Th this buffered reader doesn't have anything to do with uh, reading data from the file. We are simply using it in order to, um, in order to. Ac uh, I think we are using it to accept data from the user. Okay, so uh, in the question it has been mentioned that we'll have to accept the name of a student, and in order to accept the name of the student, we'll be using buffered reader, and we'll be also be employing input stream reader. So input stream reader gives us the input, and uh, this input from the standard input stream that is system dot in is stored in our buffer buffer object. So uh, here in this, uh, here in the next steps, you can see that we have taken the name of the student as an input, and it is stored in this string variable called name2. And now uh, here it comes to reading the data from that file. So we know that we know that uh, while trying to write data into a binary file, that is uh, the one that we created in the earlier video we had uh, written the names of the students and their registration numbers so the names of the students were written using something called write utf and the names uh, and the registration numbers which were in integer format the names were obviously in string format and the registration numbers that were it that were integers actually were uh, written using write int and so the file that was created in the first step those that was organized quite like this name followed by registration number then another name followed by the registration number so this is how the file that was created in the first step was organized so uh, in order to read the data from that file we'll be using something called read utf so read utf will read the string values that were created in the first step and after that we'll be using the read int method so utf reads string data and read int method re uh, reads all the integer values so when uh, this loop will execute for the first time it will it will first of all it will read the first name so it will read this name one and the registration number one when this ex uh, loop executes for the second time this uh, it will it will move on to the third line that is the name two that is the second name and then after that the registration number that is uh, which is uh, which is read by read int it will be uh, read in the next step and it will be stored in registration number in this sorry in this uh, variable called reg so uh, the reading is actually done in a sequential manner so while creating the file we had stored the names and the registration numbers one by one one after another and we are essentially reading them back in a same manner in a same way so the read reading the process of reading proceeds in a sequential step by step way first of all it reads the first name then the registration number then it reads the second name as well as the second registration number and so on and it will go on reading until and unless it encounters the end of the file so how can we check whether the file we that we have created uh, the file that we are reading through has reached its end or not so there is a technique that we use here you might remember that while dealing with text files we had used something called uh, let me just see where so uh, we had used something called read line and uh, this read line read the data from that file that is uh, we are talking about character based file hi files here and as long as we didn't encounter a null value in that file we went on reading okay so in text files what we did it, what we did is we went on reading the data from that file until as unless we encountered a null value so when we encountered a null value in that file we co we reached the conclusion that we have reached the end end of the file but in case of binary files we don't have that luxury that is we cannot uh, take we cannot simply assume that we are reading null so what we'll do is here we will take something called uf so uf is a boolean value and it's by default its value is false so here is the comment that accompanies that line so let me just read it out to you so what we'll do is um, 
like we did in text files uh, what happened in text files so when the text when the uh, data when the method that was reading data from the text file it encountered an empty line that is the end of the file it returned a null character okay so but in case of binary files what happens is that when uh, the file pointer reaches the end of the file it simply generates an uf exception uh, okay and it terminates the input stream so we are reading data from that file and uh, the data is being read using the input stream that is using the file input stream and data input stream uh, methods that is the file input stream object and the object of data input stream so as long as the there are values to be found in this file as long as there are some values in left in this file the reading will continue but when it encounters the end of the file when the process encounters the end of the file what happens is that it does not return any minus 1 or null values unlike in case of text files what it what happens here is that it simply terminates the, uh, the program after generating a, an uf exception so uf uf exception essentially means that we have reached the end of the file so remember this value that we had created in the first step that is uf is false so uh, we are assuming that uf is false it means that we have not reached the end of the file so as long as the value of uf does not become true we will be reading the value from we will be reading all the data from this file so we have created a value called uf which is default by default it is false and as long as the value of uf stays false stays that way we will go on reading data from that file in a sequential manner but if it so happens that we reach the end of the file what happens is that uh, this obviously uh, ex an exception uf exception is generated so we go to this catch part so the exception is caught here by the catch block and here we print the method uh, we print the error message that the end of the file has been reached and we change the value of uf from true from false to true so what it does is it terminates the while loop so uh, there is no uh, method to predict when the there is no method or there is no technique or no um, no shortcuts to predict when the file will end what we ha what we do here is we go on reading the data from this file we go on reading the values from this file as long as this method does not throw an uf exception so when it does throw an U uf exception we we can uh, assume that we have reached the end of the file and then we change the value of uf from false to true so what it does is it terminates the while loop so the while loop was running as long as the value of uf was false but when it changes from false to true this while loop terminates okay and uh, let me see what happens in this try part so we are reading the name using read int method sorry read utf method and the registration number which was in integer format that is being read using read int method and uh, we had accepted a name from the user that is the name of the student and it was stored in a string value called name2 and uh, what we are doing is we are comparing that name with the name that was read from the file and if those name hap happens if those names happen to be an exact match what we are doing is we are printing that name along with the corresponding registration number okay and we had also taken a flag variable whose initial value was 0 so the flag is nothing but an indicator which indicates whether the uh, required data was found or not so if the required data was found the value of flag changes from 0 to 1 and then we break out of the while loop using the break statement and at the end of the program we are checking whether the value of the flag is 0 or not if it is 0 we can say that the data was not found because if the data had been found the value of flag would have changed from 0 to 1 so if the data was not found the value of flag stays at 0 and we can output that the record was not found so here what we'll do is we'll simply run the program once again and we will check whether it works properly or not so here are the names and registration numbers of the students that were stored in the first step when we had executed the first program on creation of the file so 01 uh, ab 01 cd 02 ef 03 and gh 04 so first of all let me enter a name that is not actually present in this file so let me give it uh, give jj 
so it says end of file reached and record not found so what happens is that it goes on searching through the entire file but ultimately it doesn't find anything so it reaches the end of the file and uh, this method throws an uf exception so when this uf exception is thrown the value of uf this uf value it can be any other variable also here for the sake of um, making it easier to understand i have taken the boolean value as uf so it can be any other uh, it can be any other bo boolean variable but this uf here we have taken the variable as uf and this value of uf in the catch block which is there to handle this uf exception we are changing the value of uf from false to true okay and what it does is it terminates the while loop and in the next step uh, i'll be running the program once again and i'll be entering a name of the student that was actually present in the file so ab was there and his name was ab and the registration number for that particular student was one so here you can see that uh, the data that was stored in the first step that can be retrieved successfully so this concludes my second tutorial on binary file handling and uh, hopefully you've understood all the steps if you still have doubts please free, uh, feel free to leave your queries in the comment section or you can even contact me if you want so that's it for today and have a nice time everybody take care